The media is out of control and we need to do something about it. Recently the New York Times ran an article about how Russians are defective DNA and how basically if you're Russian you're less likely to be trustworthy because it's in your DNA. And so this kind of dehumanizing language has been used before in the past. But imagine if it applied to anyone else, to Jews, to blacks, to gays, whatever. You know, it, it wouldn't be used at all, but it's okay to be Russophobic because Russophobia has been conditioned into our society as a pretext for world war. They're conditioning the public to not care if they kill Russian people because they're telling them that they're not people. The media's job was to weaponize the people and turn reasonable people into radical leftist extremists. And now that it's done that, its job is to push for civil war and world war at the same time there's an economic collapse. And it's to blame Brexit, it's to blame Trump, it's to blame populism. That's the job of the media. They are enemy media. That's why they work with Hope Not Hate and other media, etc. to take down their ideological opponents. Anyone that's popular, anyone that's a populist, anyone that's raising awareness of the lies in the media. Now Newsnight is trying to get us to have sympathy for the ISIS bride because her baby died even though she didn't have a baby and it's a made-up narrative to get her back into the country. But even if her baby did die, it's an enemy baby. I don't care. ISIS is supposed to be the enemy. Are we supposed to kill ISIS? Or are we supposed to look after them? I'm a bit confused. Aren't ISIS those people in the desert that were beheading people that we're supposed to, you know, hate and we're supposed to be at war against? Oh, except they're not, are they? They're intelligence operations. They're intelligence assets, just like al Qaeda was. We're using them to take down Assad, to take down regimes that we don't like. So we're using them as a sword to take down regimes around the world. That's what Al-Qaeda is. That's what ISIS is. Is, 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 is. That's what the White Helmets are. That's why they were recalled to Israel as soon as uh, Russia was able to take out ISIS and protect Assad so they couldn't have regime change in Syria. The White Helmets fled to Israel. Funny place for Muslim jihadis to go, huh? And the internet used to be truthful, but now it's being controlled by the media and by the same big corporations. Like, look at Rotten Tomatoes, the situation with Captain Marvel recently. Because we're not allowed to not like it, even though it's rubbish. But because there's a woman, super slut, or whatever her name is, you know, we're supposed to like it automatically. Oh, it's wonderful, progressive, International Women's Day, virtue signal, virtue signal. Oh, unless you're Yazidi. If you're a Yazidi woman, you can fuck off. But everyone else, virtue signal, virtue signal. Women's rights, International Women's Day, but there are no women, and there's no sexes, and there's no genders. But, you know, International Women's Day, but there's no genders. Yeah. I was reading a story recently where in a London sauna, in a gay sauna, a man complained there was a woman there, and the woman was thrown out, because the woman had a vagina, and it was a gay men's sauna. But, of course, it wasn't a woman. It was a male-to-woman or woman-to-man transgender. I don't even know anymore. But it wasn't male. It had no right to be there. I'm totally with the people. Gay men hate transgenderism. They hate transgender activism. That's just a fact, all right? It's the lesbians that like it. It's the lesbians that are going along with the social justice warriors <laughs> and the social justice agenda in general. It's the lesbians who are regressive feminists and go along with all this woke politics, not gay men.